the purpose of this video is to help my students figure out the length of line segments that uh, could be plotted on the coordinate plane, but we're not given a coordinate plane, we're only given the coordinates. Let's say, for instance, that we had, <coughs> excuse me, that we had uh, coordinates negative 9 and 8, and we had a, this would be, we'll say, uh, a point, uh, we'll say A, and let's say that we've got coordinates for 7 and 8 for point B, and we have to figure out what is the line segment length of AB. What is line segment AB's length? Well, when we look at the coordinates that were given, we notice that there are, uh, there's a number that's in both coordinates for point A and coordinates for point B, and that is 8. We've got 8 on the y-axis uh, for uh, mentioned in both coordinates. Now, what that tells us is that on the y-axis, we're going to have a line segment that will uh, run horizontally. It will start at point 9 on the x-axis, and it will end at point 7 on the x-axis. Now, because we have positive positive, we know this will be quadrant 1, and because we have negative positive, we know that this will be coordinate 2. Because we pass from one coordinate to another coordinate, when we try to find the, air, the length of the line segment, we will add the absolute values of the uh, coordinates on the x-axis. So for here, we have negative 9, so we would have the absolute value of negative 9 plus the absolute value of positive 7, and that would be 9 plus 7, which equals 16. Now, if you want to visualize what that would look like on a coordinate plane, we can draw our y-axis there, we can draw our x-axis here. Right about here is where we would have positive 8. Right about here is where we would have negative 9. Right about here is where we would have positive 7. And our point A would be right there. And point B would be right there. And our line segment would pass right through point A on the y-axis. And if we had this into units, we could count this to make sure. But um, that's not really necessary because this method will work when you have a, a line segment that passes across from one coordinate to another. You add the absolute values. You would do that if the coordinate passed from the, uh, I'm sorry, if the line segment passed from the uh, coordinate here down into the third quadrant, or if it passed from the third quadrant to the fourth, or from the first to the fourth. There you go. Now, let's say that we had um, line coordinates uh, for a line segment. Let's say we had coordinates negative 6 and positive 4, and we'll say this to be point C. Let's say we had a point D located, and let's make that look more like a D. Lines the, uh, the point D located at negative 6, negative 5. Now, this tells me, when I look at it, that I have negative 6 in common, and since I have negative 6 in common here and here, I do know that the first uh, number in a coordinate in an ordered pair is the x coordinate. So I know that this line segment is going to pass through the negative 6 on the x axis, and it is going to be a vertical line segment starting at uh, positive 4 and ending at negative 5. And because we have, once again, a situation where we have a positive and a negative, we're passing from the second quadrant into the third quadrant, uh, we know that we're going to add their absolute values. So the absolute value of 4 plus absolute value of negative 5 is going to be 4 plus 5, which equals 9. So that would be 9 units. Now if you want to see what that would look like on a coordinate plane, this could be our y-axis, this could be our x-axis. We could say that, <coughs> excuse me, negative 6 on our coordinate plane uh, for the x-axis would be about here. Uh, positive 4 on the y-axis would be right about here. Uh, positive, negative 5 on our y-axis would be right about here. 
So we would have point C located right here at negative 6, 4. We would have point D located here at negative 6, uh, negative 5. And our line segment is going to pass right through negative 6 to here. And that would work out to be 9 units. Now let's think about another situation that we might have. Let's say that we stay in one uh, quadrant. Let's say that this is our x coordinate, this is our y uh, axis, x axis, y axis. These are all positives. This is all positive. And let's say that we have uh, point E located at uh, 3, positive 5, and we have point F located at 9, positive 5. If this were the case, notice that we have 5 on the y-axis in common here and here, and 5 on the y-axis would be right about here, and 3 and 9. 3 on the x-axis would be here, 9 would be right about here. Now this definitely is not drawn to scale because there's more room distance from 0 to 5 here than there should be. Uh, but anyhow, uh, our line segment, it would start out right about right about at the 3 here. This is where we would have E. And our next one, F, is right here, and we would connect it that way. Now, notice that we do not have, uh, we're not passing into another quadrant. We stayed all in the first quadrant. And since we stay in the first quadrant, we're not going to uh, add absolute values. Since we're in one quadrant, we're going to do some subtraction. I'm going to take this 9. And I'm going to take that 3, and I'm going to subtract 3 from the 9, and that's going to give me 6 units. So this line segment is going to be 6 units long. That was just a very quick review of how to uh, find the uh, length of a line segment given just the coordinates. I, I would look to see if my um, line segment is going to cross from one quadrant into another. If it passes the x or y axis, it does. And when that happens, you want to add your absolute values. But if you do not pass from one quadrant to another, as in this case, you want to subtract your smaller uh, point from your greater point. In this case, 9 take away 3 gave us 6 units. I hope this review is helpful for you.